Hi guys, and welcome to this masterclass series all about Lightroom Classic. Today is episode four, all about the color grading panel, a great way to color grade your photos and create a really unique look within your images. And I'm gonna start right now. Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel and this masterclass series all about Lightroom Classic. Today is episode four, all about the color grading panel. Episode one, if you're interested, is about the basics panel. Episode two was all about the tone curve. Episode three is all about HSL or the hue, saturation and luminance sliders. Today is episode four, all about color grading. And lastly is episode five, all about the calibration tool. Now, color grading panel is one of the newer panels found within Lightroom Classic. Originally, it was called the split toning channel and it was a really good way of adding in color to the shadows and highlights, but you couldn't do anything with the midtones which is why Adobe decided to update it to what it is now, which is called the color grading panel. A great way of adding in color to the shadows, midtones, and highlights. But it isn't just for color grading, it's also for adding in a natural amount of contrast as well. So today we're going over absolutely everything there is to know about the color grading panel found within Lightroom Classic. Right guys, so the very first thing you want to do is just go ahead and open up Lightroom. Now to show you what the color grading panel actually does, especially to the highlights, midtones, and shadows, I've just opened up a simple black to white gradient. So as you can see on the screen here, we've just simply got a white gradient all the way and it converts to black. Uh, and basically that's 100% white and 100% black. Now to open up uh, the color grading panel, all you need to do is go over to the develop panel found on the right hand side. Then what you want to do is go ahead and drop down to where you can see it says color grading. Now inside the color grading panel, we have three circles and these are our color wheels. Now we've got our shadows, we've got our midtones, and then we've also got our highlights. Now you can see them as a three, or you can go to the top section here and you've got, you can just select your shadows, you can just select the midtones, and you also can just select the highlights. Now let's jump over to the shadows first. Now inside the shadows, you've obviously got your main color wheel, which you can actually adapt. So for instance, if I wanna go ahead and add in red, you can do so. But if you like to, you can also rely on these three sliders. Now what you can do is you can basically control all three parameters of the color. So you can change the hue, which is the type of color. You can change the saturation, which is the intensity of that color, but you can also affect the luminance as well, which is the brightness of that color. And as you can see, you've got the hue, saturation, and luminance. Now on the color wheel, how it works is obviously you can move that around, so that changes the type of color, so that's the hue. The circle in here represents your saturation. So if you go closer to the center, that is reducing saturation. And if you go further away from the center, that's increasing the amount of saturation. Then lastly, you've got your luminance slider here, which as you can see, you can increase the brightness of that hue, and then you can decrease the brightness of that hue as well. So let's go ahead and add in a nice bright color to represent what it feels like with the shadows. So let's go ahead in a nice bright red here. So we're gonna go ahead in 0% in, in hue, 100% saturation. And as you can see, it's added it to the shadow areas. It hasn't added it to the black areas, as you can see, just to the shadow. So now let's go over to the midtones. Let's go ahead and add in some green. So I'm gonna go take it over to the green or choose the hue number of 125. Then I'm gonna go ahead and add in 100% saturation. As you can see, it kind of merges in with that kind of red that you can see here, but falls predominantly in the middle. So let's go ahead and add in, or lastly, let's go ahead and add in highlights. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in blue. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose 225 for our hue. Then I'm gonna go add in 100% saturation. As you can see, it falls on the right-hand side. So that's right close to our highlights. Now that's not the only way that you can control the color. You can also control the blending, but also the balance of that color. So underneath that, you've also got blending and balance. Let's go back to our three mains. So let's go to this section here. Now this is our blending and balancing. Blending, basically how much each one increases and decreases in size. So how it kind of blends in with the others. Think of it like a gradient. How much does it kind of overlap with the other color surrounding it? So how much does the midtones and highlights kind of overlap each other? So if you, what you can do is if you increase that number, you will see that the highlights and shadows basically blend in with the midtones and the midtones aren't as pronounced as they were. But if you decrease that number, you will see that they've become a little 
little bit more restrictive. So the highlights are only affecting a smaller band. The midtones are again only affecting the middle, and then the shadows are affecting the shadow areas. But the the the, the blending isn't as much. So you can use the blending option uh, to kind of be a little bit more subtle with the colors. If you're working with, you know, you wanna add a teal and orange look to your photo, you can use the blending to make it a little bit more natural with the highlights and shadows, how the colors kind of interact with each other. Something to do bear in mind though, if you increase it all the way to 100, that mid-tone color does sometimes get lost. So you wanna kind of balance it if you are planning on having a mid-tone color, you wanna balance it with your highlights and shadow colors as well. Now balance is very similar, basically it's just basically where those colors are. So so if you increase the balance, you're increasing the size of the highlights. And if you decrease that balance, you are increasing the size of the shadows. So as you can see, you're kind of moving where those colors are found. So you can specifically select how, to, what the size of the shadows are, or what size of the highlights are. Again, depending on what your photo, if your photo is predominantly a dark photo or a photo that's got lots of shadows in it, then you want to maybe decrease the size of the shadow so it doesn't overwhelm the photo. So the midtones have a little bit more of a prominent role within your color grading effect. Effect. So really this is how you can control the color. Now obviously inside there you can also go into these and you can blend each one as well. Now something else to bear in mind you can also create a global color. Now obviously we can select highlights, midtones and shadows independently from each other but you can also select a global color which will affect all of the colors within the actual photo. So what we can do is go to the very last section here and you can see we've got global. So let's say we want to go ahead in, I don't know, let's choose pink for example. So we go add in pink, let's say, and if we go ahead and create saturation, you can see we've added pink all over the place. So now pink is covering the entire photo. So every single color is being affected by this global change. Now, I don't necessarily use the global change a lot because I never really need to create a global change. I like specifically selecting certain areas that I want to add uh, a color to. Global change is something you might want to add and that's how you add it. But for my personal opinion, I very rarely use that effect. Okay, so that's how it works. But how does it work in practice? Let's go ahead and actually use it on an actual photo. So instead of using a gradient, what we're going to do is go ahead and use our sample photo of today, which is a lovely portrait model of a girl. Now, in this particular case, I would probably want to add in more of a teal and orange look to the photo. And this is easily done when we're using the actual color grading sliders. So let's go ahead in our shadows first. Now to create a teal and orange look, Firstly, we want to create a teal look in the shadow areas. So let's go add in teal. Now teal is found kind of in between blue and green. It's this kind of color here. I find 175 works quite nice, although sometimes I do darken it ever so slightly. So we're gonna add in 175 there. You've also got your saturation slider. You can go ahead and increase. Now you might find that's a little bit green. Uh, I do find so, so what I'm gonna do is move that slightly to more towards the blue area. So I'm probably gonna go for a number of maybe 200 in this particular case. Now you can control the intensity or the saturation by just going to that saturation slide that you can see here. Now, a quick tip is if you want to kind of emphasize skin tones in the photo, you can do that by actually selecting the skin tones as a color. So how do we do that? Well, instead of just manually selecting a color using the color wheel, you see this little square here that we haven't used yet? Click on that square and it'll come up with a custom color. If you go ahead and select this, this is your eyedropper tool, click and drag, over an area that you want to create. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sample that. That is now created or selected that specific color, which is obviously we've selected skin tones, so we've se selected the color of the skin. And what we can do that is actually apply that in the midtones. So let me just revert that back to blue. So we're gonna go for a blue for the shadows. Let's go ahead and select the midtones. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that exact same thing. So we click on that small button here, and then you can go ahead and create a custom color. Now you've got a variety of here you can create or add your own swatches if you like, but today I'm just gonna go and use the eyedropper tool click and drag over that, and we're just gonna go ahead and select somewhere in the skin tones. So I'm gonna go ahead and select like so. And the number we've got is hue of 17, saturation of 35. But I find that's a bit dark. So I'm gonna go to the luminance slider here, and I'm gonna go ahead and increase that like so. So I'm gonna increase it to about 50% about I think in this particular case. Then let's go ahead over to the highlights. Last one, I'm gonna go ahead in more of an orange color. So I'm gonna probably go for hue of 50, then I'm gonna go ahead and drag in that saturation. 
to the point where I am happy. So I'm gonna go for that. Then I'm gonna go to the luminance here and I'm gonna increase that like so. So I'm gonna go again, go for about 45 in this particular case. Then what I'd probably recommend doing is go to the balance slider here and I'm just gonna drag that balance slider down, see what that affects. Now as you can see, it's introducing more blue because we're increasing the size of the shadows. Where if I go the other way, you can see that we're actually adding in more of this really nice warm color. Now I don't wanna go too far. I think 25 in this particular case works quite nicely, but overall I'm actually really happy with this effect. Now obviously you can go ahead over to global and if you really wanted to, I'd maybe go in, add in a little bit more orange. So I'd probably go for maybe 25 in this particular case for hue color then I'd maybe add in a 10% saturation. And I think brightening the overall photo will look quite nice. So what I can do is just brighten it using the luminance slider we have here. So I'd probably brighten it by maybe, again, 25% there. Now, if you go back to the global adjustments, as you can see, we've used the shadows, we've used the hue, and we've used the highlights. Now, what's also quite nice is you've also got some numbers to reference it here as well. So if we hover over this, you can see you've used hue of 17, the saturation of 35, and luminance of plus 50. And you can see that with numbers here. So if you did want to create a preset, you can actually use these numbers to help you out, which I think is really helpful. And then obviously you've also got your blending and balancing to make it a little bit more subtle. Now, what we can do is if we just turn off that color grading, what we can do is go to the toggle slider here. So we've made a few effects already, but we can just toggle off the color grading effect. So what we can do is do the before, and we can see we've done the after. We've created this really nice golden effect. Now we can add even more effects if you want to by using HSL color. We can go into the tone curve, but obviously that is a completely separate video. And if you are interested, go ahead to my other Lightroom masterclass videos, again, in the playlist, in the link in the description that will cover those topics. But as you can see, the color grading sliders and panel is incredibly helpful for creating a real cool, customizable color grading effect. And obviously you can go ahead and save it as a preset if you ever want to reuse this effect in the future. Brilliant, and there we go guys. So there's everything that you need to know about the new color grading panel found within Lightroom Classic. As you can see, it's unbelievably customizable. You can do absolutely anything you want. You can affect the hue, saturation, and luminance of both the shadows, mid-tones and highlights independently from each other. You can blend them together or you can separate them. It's so customizable, you can create an amazing color grading effect with just this one panel alone. But obviously, you've got the whole rest of Lightroom as well. So if you're interested in learning about the tone curve or maybe the hue, saturation and luminance sliders, go ahead and watch my previous masterclass videos that are available on YouTube. I'll make sure to leave the playlist in the link in the description. And also, obviously, if you're interested in learning about calibration, because I think it's a really powerful tool, make sure to stay subscribed. That video will be coming out next Friday. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, it really does help me out. Also, if you're interested in video, or are you a hybrid shooter like me, and you're interested in video as well, I've got a brand new channel available on YouTube, which goes over Premiere Pro tutorials, as well as video tips and tricks. So if you're interested in video, make sure to subscribe to that brand new channel. I'll be releasing videos every two weeks. Again, guys, I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you.